Transmedia storytelling is the technique of telling stories across multiple media platforms. In the old style, when you told a story, it uh, was repeated on the television, on the computer, on your mobile phone, even in the newspaper. With transmedia storytelling, you are using the best, strongest features of each platform to tell a different piece of the story so that it reaches the audience member and invites feedback, like a dialogue. A process to convey messages, themes, and storylines to a mass audience through the artful and well-planned use of multiple media platforms, okay? So it is a way of, of thinking um, that will help you to extend the lifespan of your intellectual property or your brand. Um, and you're going to do it not just for commercial purposes, but because it is a good story. But the key to extending across multiple platforms is a fundamental understanding of the world of the story. If you understand the story world, then you will be able to create new content on other media platforms, content that is true and speaks uh, intelligently and artfully to the content that's in the screenplay. The networks, the movie studios, the game companies, the publishers, they did not create the story to work this way. It was still linear, still one media platform at a time. Instead of thinking of your intellectual property for just one of these things, because that's what you do. Well, I'm Rye, I create television shows. The property becomes a TV series. No, I am talking about putting the world of the property in the middle and extending the property out to a variety of different media platforms, the ones that you have access to. You can maximize the potential of this intellectual property if it works in different ways on different media platforms, okay? It, if it, um, uh, different aspects of the story can be told, uh, then you are becoming more successful and young people will be willing to spend more money to get different parts of, of the story. The secret to engage in a story is uh, so simple, but it's still rare. It's listening, listening. When you hear uh, someone, when someone believes that you are listening to them, it is extremely powerful. Why? Because no one listens to us. From when we are children, <laughs> very few people really are listening to us. A good storyteller is looking right in your eyes and is engaging with you and is adjusting the narrative, even in tiny ways, as they receive your feedback. For the first time in, in over a century, over 100 years, we have the technology to listen to you. And we can use that technology in transmedia technique to create a highly engaged audience. With the advent of social media, with the advent of the internet, you have to consider the, cons the audience because they want to express themselves. They want to be heard and they want to speak. So we are really back in the campfire, sitting in a circle, listening to the storyteller, but also looking into my eyes as I look into your eyes so that I hear you so that I'm responding to your needs, so that I may be adjusting my story a little bit to accommodate you, so that you understand me more clearly and you enjoy it more deeply. So Transmedia uses all kinds of different techniques to weave together um, a, uh, an experience for the consumer or the participant or the audience member. So 
Gamification, or creating game-like elements, is one dab of paint on a full palette of different tools that you can use in transmedia technique. With the digital age, with the social age that was just around the corner, people were going to be connecting with one another in many, many different kinds of ways. It was going to create chaos, but at the same time, there were young people who were going to enjoy interacting with all of these screens, all of these different ways to connect. They wanted story to do the same thing. They wanted to hear and enjoy their entertainment. When you uh, create uh, a story with transmedia, you of course are paying attention to the part of the story that's going to be seen by many, many people. The television show, the movie. But with transmedia, what you're also thinking of is, what if some of those people really love this story? What if they want to dive deeper, go more into the world of the story? Well, transmedia furnishes um, uh, 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 aspects of the story which have more detail, which are um, perhaps more difficult to get hold of, and, uh, and yet have their own little rewards, the Easter eggs of the story. So um, the fan, the true fan, the niche, the smaller group, can dive deeper and find what they want, and then they become very happy with this, and they tell their friends. And uh, so maybe their friends, some of those friends, dive deeper also. Um, so Transmedia meets the needs of the mass audience, but also rewards uh, the very loyal niche audience. Children, but also adults who are not as handy with technology, are going to be able to create their own content and express themselves in ways that will look amazing, that will, that will look professional. Uh, one of the fun parts of my job is to watch uh, the audience, particularly the young audience, very, very closely because they are the ones who are exploring the technology and finding new ways to express themselves with the technology. At Meet the Media Guru, we're going to be talking about individuated content. Uh, the idea of uh, uh, the, the fact that children are using iPhones and other equipment, flip cameras, to create films which they're posting on the internet which are unrelated to um, any movie or television show or song. It is uh, entirely new and original. Um, and uh, this is a little scary to the big media. <clears throat> After all, they are not uh, influencing this uh, content and the child is spending a lot of time uh, not engaged with big media, but creating their own media. Um, this is very fascinating. What do we do? How do we influence it? Uh, how do we uh, become inspired by this content? Uh, these are the frontiers of transmedia storytelling. So, um, how do you reach uh, that child and do you want to even? The things that we must persuade our clients to consider is, um, is to engage in this dialogue and to put the content where the user can play with it and question it and engage with it. They sometimes don't want to do this because the user often tries to break the content um, by making fun of it, by complaining, uh, by um, uh, questioning the, um, the quality. Um, and um, uh, th what we tell our clients is you must allow um, this engagement. Uh, because uh, the user uh, will often surprise you, but in that surprise, they are giving you insight into the nature of and quality of uh, the content. And, uh, and in doing so, it can improve uh, the content, improve the experience. All we tell our clients is give them stuff to play with. Give them uh, toys and let them go.
the beauty of the touchscreen devices is that for the first time in the history of computing, um, you can go to these devices and you need to know nothing. You need to know nothing. You just touch. The image is there, you touch, and something is activated. You don't need to know how to move a mouse. You don't need to know about folders. Um, and what this has done is it has removed the last blockage between audience and content um, uh, in, in computing. Um, and, uh, and what this uh, will do now is it will allow for um, uh, pure expression. It will allow for um, a, an interface that is entirely organic. And once that happens, um, you can move to more emotional, more poignant, um, and uh, more rich forms of self-expression much faster. So uh, a, a young child who is interfacing with these new touchscreen technologies is going to move much more quickly to the uh, uh, creation, the development, and the distribution of rich content than any of us could ever imagine. And um, what we're seeing at Starlight Runner on the horizon is um, uh, applications that are going to make it more and more simple to create very good, high quality content. That to me is very exciting. Stories can affect change. Um, and these are not the stories that are told to us, but the stories that we share. If we take the archetypes, the mythology that we live with, the highest aspirations, and weave them back into our story, we can remember what we've moved away from. You can take people who were invisible, who were not capable of understanding their own world because they had been isolated by tyranny or by dogma. And you can poke holes through those walls with transmedia and they will see freedom and they will see different ways of understanding their own circumstance and they will also see ways to start telling their stories to us. When I am listened to, when somebody hears me, it makes me brave. It makes me able to take stronger action. This can happen for entire populations. And if we carefully design ways for them to do that, if we create a methodology to empower their storytellers to tell their stories to us, we can activate people who are oppressed, people who are invisible, people who are isolated. And they will then fight for their freedom.